But Nancy... Nancy, I did not tell your cousin he couldn't dance. I merely asked him to look down and see if his shoelaces were tied together. <laughs> That's all I said. The Four of Us. Starring Janet Gaynor and George Murphy. With Susie Kay and Barbara Baird. Created and produced by Ed James. And brought to you by the makers of... Well, we're not quite sure of that at the moment. So this fella says, no, no, not Kenny. Kenny. K like in kangaroo, E like an elephant. And the operator said, E like in what? <laughs> Well, don't you get it? I don't even know if I want it. Laurie, that's the whole point of the joke. It's very amusing, dear. Laurie, stand still. You see, if the operator heard him say E, what difference does it make what the E stood for? Father, I understand. Well, why don't you think it's funny? I don't know. I think it's funny. You do your homework. But I said I thought it was funny. And I said do your homework. Gee whiz. Tom. If I were Groucho Marx or Red Skelton, you'd be rolling on the floor. Speaking of summer vacations... Who said anything about summer vacation? Mommy did. Oh. <laughs> what about it? Well, the girls and I had a long talk this afternoon. And we've got a wonderful idea. Lynn, please. As I was saying, we had a long talk. Well, I think it's wonderful. Mother, she's going to ruin everything. Now what I do? Nothing, dear. We had a long talk... About renting a cottage at the lake? Well, roughly, yes. Well, let's smooth it out a little. The answer is no. You see, she did spoil it. She got Father upset and spoiled the whole thing. I didn't either, did I, Mommy? Lori, I am not upset. I merely have no desire to become a bachelor for three months. I wish I was dead. Tom, if you came up weekends... But I don't want to come up weekends. If we can't all have a vacation together, then we won't have a vacation, that's all. Nancy goes up to the lake every summer, and her father comes up weekends. Well, good for him. And it isn't only Nancy. Bitsy and Merle and Norma. Why do we always have to go where her friends are? Why can't we go where my friends are? Where's that? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I was dead. Camille, before you take your last breath, would you please turn around? <laughs> Everybody else can go to the lake. Everybody else can have fun, but not me. There's a law or something. And so help me. Angel. Now. We've always had fun, the four of us. And I think we ought to be very grateful that your father loves us so much that he doesn't want to be alone for even a few days. You know, I'm beginning to have my doubts. Tom! It might serve him right if I made him go up to the lake, both of them. Father! We might have a little peace around here for a change. Would you, Father? Really? I don't want to go to the lake. You keep out of this. I want to go where my friends are. Now, listen, nobody's going anywhere, do you understand? So be quiet, both of you. But, Father, you just... Never mind, Laurie. I wish she was dead. Lynn! Well, that's what she always says. <laughs> Don't either. Lynn. Oh, she does, too. Lynn, Laurie says she wishes she were dead. That's what I said. But there's a difference between wishing you were dead and wishing somebody else was dead, isn't there? If she wants to be dead, what difference does it make? Lynn! I was only trying to be agreeable. <laughs> Would you please see who's at the door? She said she wished she was dead, and I said I wish she was dead. I wasn't even arguing with her. Now, Laurie... Father, I just had a brilliant idea. You could make a carpool with some of the other fathers. About the only thing that I'll be able to make will be a paddle. And if you don't stop using that ridiculous expression, I'm going to put it right where it'll do the most good. What ridiculous expression? I wish I was dead. There, you see, you've even got your mother doing it. Oh, no, Tom, I... Never mind. <laughs> Rushing up to the lake for the weekend and spending the rest of the week alone, that's not my idea of being a family. We should stay together, and that's the way it's going to be. It was a man with a letter. Oh. He let me sign for it on the second line. Thrill, thrill, thrill. I didn't see you signing for any letters. Never mind, Lynn. I think she's so wonderful just because she wears high heels. Oh, no. Tom, what is it? Father, if Nancy's father came over and explained to you... Father? But they can't. Who can't? Who can't what? Mother, what is it? 
Well, it seems your father is being called back into the Navy. <laughs> but if they wanted to, they could put you on a submarine, couldn't they, Daddy? Well, if they wanted to, they could put me on a rocket and shoot me to the moon. Oh, gee. Take your milk, Lynn. More coffee, dear? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Mother, isn't there something we can do? Like what, dear? Like, well, it just isn't fair. They don't care if I never get to the lake. <laughs> Fine. My whole life is being disrupted, and all she's worried about is the lake. How would you get back? What? If they shot you up to the moon, would you stay there? Oh, no, I guess I'd come home weekends. Like it was the lake? Yes, they probably have a rocket pool for fathers. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh, no, not this, too. Tom. Good morning, Betsy. Oh, it sure is a beautiful day, isn't it? Is it? Sure is. Hey, there's not much bacon left. Is anybody hungry? Have some bacon, Betsy. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can cook me any time, Mrs. Hathaway, you know? I was under the impression she did. <laughs> Uh, Bitsy, why don't you and Laurie drop Lynn off on your way to school? Oh, but that's clear over on Hillcrest and... Oh, sure. <laughs> we'll be glad to. Come on, Noodlehead. But it's too early. Can't I just drink some more milk? Lynn? She will. That's a good girl. I'll be home early. All right, dear. Hey, what's the matter with your father? He looks terrible. I'll tell you. <laughs> he's gonna get shot. What? To the moon. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'll get shot, all right, about two minutes after I tell the Navy what I think. Tom. You know, you struggle and sweat for 15 years to try to establish a business and a home, and they tear the whole thing apart with one miserable letter, a form letter. It's... It just doesn't make sense. Well, of course it doesn't. But when did the Navy ever make sense? You know, I'll bet you there are thousands of reserve officers who'd be glad to go. Fellows with no responsibilities or families. Younger men. Exactly. Now, why they couldn't just... <laughs> what? There must be thousands of young, active men. Darling, what do you mean, active? <laughs> Dan, you make it sound as though I had a beard clear down to my knees. <laughs> That's not true. But there must be thousands of younger men. Dan, I am not an old man. Of course you aren't. And I'm not exactly ready for a wheelchair. Tom. And if those Navy fellows are looking for a mature mind and a good active body, they know exactly what they're doing, and don't you forget it. <laughs> I'll have another cup of coffee. Aye, aye, sir. Because the president said so, that's how. You mean the letter was from the president? I'll bet. Well, it was, and I ought to know. I signed for it, didn't I? Okay, then what did it look like? The letter? Well, it had an eagle on the top and an American flag. And on the bottom it said, Yours truly, Jack. There, see? Oh, gosh, I didn't know. <laughs> Well, when's he going? On Saturday. That's why we're having the party Friday night. Well, what party, Lori? And your mother wants us all to come? Well, Matt, you're my friends, aren't you? Well, Lori? Well, isn't your father going to have any of his friends? Oh, a couple, I guess. He doesn't like parties too much. Lori? <laughs> yeah, think of it. You're clear over to the lab. See you around. Okay, Square. See you Friday, Lori. Bye. Uh, Lori. What is it, Betsy? What party? The going away party for my father. I didn't hear your mother say anything about a party. Well, how could she? It's a surprise. For your mother? For my father. Honestly, Betsy. Well, aren't you even going to tell her? Well, naturally. Somebody has to fix the food. Oh. And Daddy says when he gets to Japan, he's going to send for us. Won't that be fun? Did you hear that, Mike? They're sending Tom to Japan. Yeah, he can have it. Hiya, Lynn. Enjoying the party? Yes, sir. How about some more punch, dear? Love it. 
You poor angel, you and those girls alone in this great big house, I'd be petrified. Oh, it won't be so bad. Well, I'm glad I'm not married to a hero. <laughs> Come on, Tom, you gotta know something. I don't care what kind of a war record you had. They're not calling you up just for kicks. Pete, I don't know a thing. I give you my word. Even if he did, he couldn't tell you. I've read all about these things. But if there's going to be a war, I'd like to know. Boy, with my record, they'll call me when the Russians are in Lincoln Park. <laughs> what for? To keep them off the grass? Oh, God. <laughs> Mr. Hathaway, sir. What's the matter, Bitsy? We're running short of food? Oh, no. It's, uh... Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, sure. Excuse me a minute. Let's go in the den, Bitsy. Take it easy, Admiral. Some friend, he's probably got a line straight through to the Pentagon. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, Betsy, what's on your mind? Well, you see... Tom! Honey, would you excuse us for just a minute? Betsy's got a little problem. What is it, Betsy? Well, I was just wondering if... I, I know it's asking a lot, but... Sir, can I serve on your ship? On my what? When I join the Navy. I'll be old enough in a few years. Sir. <laughs> now, Betsy... Uh, don't you think you'd much rather go into the Army? Oh, no, sir. You see, I think food's a lot better. Well, I thought if you'd... <laughs> it is? Oh, yeah, greatest food in the world. Ice cream and pie at every meal, including breakfast. No kidding? <laughs> in the Navy, you're lucky if you get ice cream and pie once a year. You ought to think it over. Oh, I will. <laughs> sure will. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. All right. Um, you're a... <laughs> do you know what that boy do to the Navy? He'd eat a battleship and a half rations in a week. <laughs> he would. Tom! You dog. Hi, Sam. What did I do now? What a break, huh, Ann? 600 guys in the outfit and old Tom hits a jackpot. We hadn't thought of it that way. You hadn't? After the times we had in Paris and Nice... Hey, you don't suppose they'll send you back to Rome? Well, I don't know. I just got... Hey, around. what was the name of that gal? You know, the one that shoved me into the fountain? Sam. Oh, you should have seen it, Sam. Talk about ensigns being wet behind the ears. I was wet clear up. Boy, was I wet. Honey, why don't we go in the other room? No, this is fine. And then when Tom tried to pull me out, I pulled him in with me. Sam. You should have seen us. We were the two wettest guys in Italy. And then Tom's girl. I didn't have a girl. Oh, maybe it was my girl. Anyway. Hey, remember those kimonos they put on us? Purple, red, and pink? I don't know what you're talking about. I went back to the ship. Are you kidding? Back to the ship? I couldn't get my shoes dry for three days. Honey, we've got a whole house full of guests. Oh, what a weekend. Vino and salami. What was the name of that tall blonde? Sam. You know, the one that had the tattoo on her. Sam! <laughs> I went back to the ship. Okay, you went back to the ship. And you should have seen her. She was a great big gal. Must have weighed 200 pounds. Anyway, she had this tattoo, see, on her arm right here. And every time she wiggled her elbow, <laughs> I tell you, I nearly laughed myself right out of the Navy. Some party. I'm glad you liked it. Only I... I thought this time we weren't going to make any fuss. We weren't, but there was nothing much I could do. Laurie had already invited practically everybody in town. <laughs> oh, that Laurie. Well, it was... it was good fun. Remember the last time you left for the service? We'd been married only... four months. We didn't even know about Laurie. I did. You did? You never told me. I didn't want you to worry. Gosh, an awful lot's happened since then. Lori, Lynn. Tom, I love you very much. I love you, darling. You know, I don't think I can ever remember a time when I didn't love you. Oh, I think I love you now more than ever before. We've had so much to share, so many happy memories. And we'll always have them, just the two of us. Tom. Yes, Angel? What really happened in Rome? <laughs>
Well, I guess that's about everything. I don't know. It just doesn't seem real. What doesn't, sweetheart? Well, less than a week ago, we were a normal American family with normal American problems. Like where to spend our vacation. <laughs> now, heaven knows when I'll see you again. Honey, now look at me. You remember what we said? No tears? I wasn't crying. Of course you weren't. Besides, I'll be back in a few days. They've got to give me a couple of weeks to straighten things out at the office. That's the least they can do. Okay? I'm all right. You bet you are. Must be catching a little cold. I guess this is it. Time to shove off. So soon? Oh, Tom. Honey? Well, can I even come down to the car with you? Well, sure you can, but... No tears, I promise. And why don't you and the girls have a talk about renting the house, and then wherever I'm stationed, you can join me. We'll talk about it. Daddy! <laughs> I don't want you to go, Daddy, please! Oh, Lynn, darling, now, come on. I don't want them to shoot you in a rocket. They're not going to shoot me in a rocket. I'm not the rocket type. But they will. They'll shoot you up to the moon. You'll never oh, come no. back. Stop blubbering and get all over my coat. Oh, that's enough, Lynn. I don't want him to go, Mommy. Of course you don't, Angel. Nothing is going to happen to me. Nothing can happen to me. There isn't even a war. You're the most wonderful father in the whole world. And I drove you away! <laughs> Honey, nobody drove me anywhere. I merely got a call from the Navy. Now, I didn't volunteer. Please don't go to the moon, Daddy. Please! <laughs> can't you do something about it? Everybody, look, why don't you all come on down to Navy headquarters with me? What? You mean we can? Well, yes, and that'll give us another 30 minutes together. Do they have a lot of sailors? If there's one thing the Navy has, it's sailors. Well, are, you, are you sure we won't be in the way? Honey, it'll be all right. And then you can show us your rocket. Sweetheart, they don't have any rockets. It's merely an office down on Spring Street. Now, where's she going? Laurie! Oh, I'll only be a minute, Mother. I've got to change my clothes. Laurie, we'll be late. You wouldn't want all those sailors to see me like this. <laughs> expect you to come right here in the office. But you said... I thought you'd wait outside in the hall. Oh, Father, don't be ridiculous. I don't see any rockets. Can I help you, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, why don't you sit right over here? I'm Lieutenant Hathaway. I was told to report this morning to Commander Breen. Oh, okay. Let's see now. Uh, Hathaway, Hathaway, Hathaway. Uh, Thomas L. Yes, yes, here it is. Hathaway, T.L., Lieutenant... Junior Graves. He's only in for three years. Yes, well, uh, why don't you have a seat, and I'll see if the commander's busy. He, uh, he's going to see if the commander's busy. Don't they have any young ones? Sorry, never mind the sailors. Tom. You know, those chiefs have the nastiest way of saying junior grade. They make you feel like something that is scraped off the hull. Don't 
don't even have any submarines. No, I'm sorry. I changed my dress. Tom, it's almost time for lunch. Now, honey, look, we can't rush him, you know. After all, we just got here. Oh, I know, but I mean, if your train or boat doesn't leave right away, can't we all have lunch together? Oh, I suppose so. And, Anne, it's not a boat. It's a ship. I'm sorry. Can I have a hamburger, Mommy, please? That's one way you can always tell a civilian. They keep calling them boats. I said I was sorry. Can I, Mommy, please? Can you what? Have hamburger. <laughs> no, dear, it's almost time for lunch. I mean for lunch. <laughs> oh, well, we'll see. Oldest looking sailors I've ever seen. Lieutenant. Yes? The commander will see you now. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. All right, dear. Stop scuffing your shoes, Lynn. They're right in there, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Lieutenant Hathaway reporting as instructed, sir. Well, let's not be so formal about it. My name's Breen. Oh, how do you do, sir? Well, why don't you sit down? Over right here. Well, thank you very much. Hathaway, I'll get right to the point. Now, you know the way the Navy operates. I certainly do. And, sir, I think in this instance they're being a little rough, if I may say so. Oh, well, how do you mean, rough? Well, I got my notice five days ago, less than five days. Now, I have a business and a home, and I need 30 days to get my affairs in order, either before or after I report for duty. Well, maybe I'd better explain something first. You see, the Navy is starting a large-scale building operation, and we need men with civilian know-how, with Navy background, to see that we get a fair shake. That's why we've sent for men like you. Well, yes, sir, but I still think that now, if you just give us two hours of your time every Saturday to check contracts and specifications, <laughs> you'll be helping us out of a big hole. If I what? If you're only two hours a week, we can't put you on an active status. And I'm afraid there's no way that you can get paid. But in six months, eight at the most, the job should be finished. You mean just Saturdays? For two hours. That's not a lot to ask, is it? <laughs> no, but uh, I thought I... Will you do it? Well, yes, but I... I knew you would. What's a Navy man? Oh, it's a Navy man. I, I guess so, but you see, when I got the letter... Now, you I... just come in next Saturday morning or afternoon. It doesn't matter. We'll have your gear all set up for you. Desk, secretary, whatever you need, okay? Oh, yes, sir. But you see, when I got the letter, I thought I was being called back for active duty. You did? Well, don't give it another thought. We have all the young men we need for that. <laughs> see you next Saturday, right? Yes, sir. And thanks for coming by. It's all right. Young men. <laughs> I don't care what kind of OR record you have. They're not calling you up just for kicks. Sir, can I serve on your ship? Take it easy, Admiral. Daddy. What did he say? Do you have to leave before lunch? Tom, what is it? I wish I was dead. <laughs> so even if you have to work on Saturday, you can come up to the lake on Sunday. <laughs> Father, I don't think it's fair. Why does she always get to pick out the place? Drink your milk. I think she's so wonderful just because she wears nylons. What happened to your mother? She said she forgot something. Father. Lori, look, if it's about the lake, I don't want to hear about it. I wish I was double dead. Do me one favor. Could we please have one peaceful breakfast without an argument? But, Father. We'll have plenty of time to talk about the lake between now and June. Now, if we have your breakfast. Holy Petunia! Good morning, dear. What are you supposed to be? Oh, I thought I'd give our breakfast a Roman touch. <laughs> Here you are, love. Cafe Espresso. <laughs> I thought it was a little early for vino and salami. And I give you my word. I know. You went back to the ship. <laughs> Better hurry, girls. You'll be late for Sunday school. Mother, I'm 16. Can't I please go to church? 
sorry we've been all through this. But it's so juvenile. She can go to church. I can't even wear lipstick. <laughs> I'm not going to church. She's going to Sunday school. But mother... You heard your mother. Eat your breakfast. Who? Daddy, she said... I heard what she said. Drink your milk. We is. And I don't want to hear another word out of either of you. Understand? Not one more word. Tom, speaking of summer vacation... Oh, could I please have a cup of coffee? <laughs> You know, if I could catch a fish with this thing like I just caught myself, I'd be very lucky. <laughs> What's that about? Oh, I'm just looking over the next script. Ed James certainly knows family comedy, doesn't he? He sure does. You know, he's the guy that cooked up Father Knows Best. I know. Wish I could write. Janet, I'll let you in on a secret. He really doesn't write. He just has a lot of children of his own at home, and he sits around and listens to them. Well... He's a pretty good listener. There's only one thing I don't understand. What's that? Well, where it says sponsor's message. If we don't know who the sponsor is, how do we know what we're selling? Oh, they have a special system for that. You see, when they find out who the sponsor is, then they tell us, and then we start to sell. Oh. See, if you didn't know what you're selling, it makes it very rough on the fellows who have to write the commercials. I see. George. But don't you worry about that, because with a face like yours, you could sell the Brooklyn Bridge. Do you really think so? I really think so, and if we get a bridge sponsor, I'll be your first customer. Thank you, George. I don't know about bridges, but I have a lot of teenage friends, and they buy practically everything else. Cars, cameras, and food. I'll bet they eat more food than anybody in the whole world. I'm only 16, but I'd love to tell them about you. Think she's so wonderful just because she's got a girdle. There's a character who's really a character. I'm Ed James, and I'd like to tell you some of the things we've planned for the series. We intend to tell stories of a normal American family in comfortable circumstances, with our accent on that unique and fantastic period when the children are growing in and out of their teens. Stories which we hope will be warm and human as well as amusing. We have one, for example, in which Laurie starts a two-family feud by going steady with the wrong boy. In another, the children suffer an emotional upheaval when their parents win a Charleston contest at the country club. As you can see, the storylines will be simple and always with audience identification as an immediate goal. The production staff is ready and waiting. Directors like John Rich, Don Weiss, and Jimmy Kern, with over a thousand great shows to their credit, from I Love Lucy and Our Miss Brooks to Jack Benny and Dobie Gillis. Camera, sets, makeup, wardrobe, each department is in the hands of a top artisan in a world where perfection is a byword. As for actors, supporting casts will be chosen with such infinite care that there's really no need to worry over the fact that I'll be writing most of the scripts. All of us here, cast and crew alike, think that our little opus will be exciting fun. We'd like to hear from you soon, even if it's only a contract. See you later. <laughs>